The Undercountry Music News is an excerpt of the weekly internet broadcast, Undercountry Music, which features music from great country artists you won't hear on mainstream radio, as well as a roundup of the most interesting country music news of the week without all the fluff. To listen and subscribe to the full weekly episode, please visit undercountrymusic.com or simply subscribe to the Undercountry Music Podcast on iTunes. Let's get into it. And that's some good news. I'm very, very happy to bring you uh, good news, bad news. Uh, you know, at the Gallows Poll, the condemned always say no noose is good news. But it's time for the Undercountry Music News! 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 Yeah! Oh, I'm ready to have a lot of fun with this one today, aren't you? <laughs> I love this par- portion of the show, and that's usually why it takes up about half my show. I just love milling through the country music news and uh, stating my opinion and blabbing my mouth about uh, whatever comes across my dang mind. So here's, here's what we do here if you've never experienced the under country music news. I type in country music news in Google, and Google goes and fetches me all the top websites for country music news. And I go onto these websites, and you know what I look for? Come on. That's right, country music news. I need you to be a little quicker on the uptake here. I don't have all frickin' day people, okay? All right, I look for country music news. I have some websites. I find lots of country music news. Other websites, I find some country music news. Couple websites, I find very little country music news. And usually there's always that one website that's supposed to have country music news, but all they got are BS press releases. You know why Darius Rucker thinks polka dots will be in fashion in 2015 or some kind of crap like that. You know, the you know, there are PR people just push out these total bull crap stories just to keep their artists, you know, in the news. I mean, it works. These places print this crap instead of doing their jobs and looking for what's actually country music news. So when I go on a website and it's got nothing but BS, like Darius Rucker polka dot stories, I shall award said website with the dreaded undercountry music news wet belch of the week. (coughs) Whoa. Uh. Wow, that one actually had some uh, liquid in it there. So what I have, I reheated some Culver's Butter Burger and Crinkle Cut Fries. I had a salad from my tower garden. I had, you know, yeah, neither my wife nor my kid finished their dinner tonight, so I ate the rest of her salad and drank her soup, chicken noodle soup. Yeah, that's for colds, not busted wrists, I know. And then my kid left a couple uh, dinosaur-shaped chicken nuggets in his plate, and I downed those too. So needless to say, it could be an under-chunky music news wet belt of the week this week. And we're going to start with CMT. And I mean that because they get the under-country music news wet belt of the week. Let's see if I can do this without actually vomiting on the mic. Oh, I had to stop myself. Yeah, they got jack crap over there at CMT. So screw them. I'm moving on. Let's try GAC, Great American Country. You know what? All I did was find BS press releases over there, too. 
Uh, no actual news, but I did find one one thing, and you know, what? it is a press release. Uh. No, there's that belch, and it's not music related. It's totally self serving for GAC, but it's still pretty damn cool. A new TV show called Growing Up Gator is set to premiere on GAC October 24th. And and this show follows three ladies in their young 20s who are operating a gator rescue while maintaining busy social lives. (laughs) I, I wonder what their handbags are made of. Gals and gators. Hot damn, I'm quitting my job. Wait, I'm my boss. I can't afford to fire me. (laughs) All right. Other than that, GAC pretty much sucks this week. All right. Over at, oh, not, no, what am I saying? Over at Country Weekly. Right. Uh, Well, what can I say about Country Weekly other than. (coughs) Whoa. Man. I got to not do this show on a full stomach. It's tough to get out those wet belches. But yeah, Country Weekly gets one too. Because they got Jackety Bip Bop Doo this week. Move along to Taste the Country. Boy, I got some interesting flavors going on right now myself. Over at Taste the Country, they are reporting that Garth Brooks has broken his own record for single city ticket sales. In Minneapolis, Garth has 11 shows scheduled at the Target Center in November and has sold 188,000 seats to these events so far. And tickets were still selling like hotcakes at the time of the publishing of this story. Moving right along. TheBoot.com. Now, we're going to have some fun over at The Boot today. I'm even going to uh, name the uh, the ladies who wrote these stories. We got two ladies over there just writing stories. Like, I, I mean, you can just almost feel the smoke coming off their fingers. They're typing so much damn country music news. I got to hand it to the ladies, Christina Vincent over at TheBoot.com and also Gail Thompson. Well, Christina Vinson brings us this one, as well as a couple others. Glenn Campbell has released his final song, which is absolutely a farewell song in every way. And it's entitled, I'm Not Gonna Miss You. You can hear the song and watch the video over at theboot.com. This song, it's an absolute masterpiece of a song. I mean, so many artists at the end of their career just churn out crap and expect us all to sit here and slap our mitts together like trained seals just because they've been around so long that they fart dust. Now, I'm sure Glenn Campbell wrote this song before he got too far gone, but to think a guy as old as Glenn Campbell, riddled with Alzheimer's, can release a song that is so great, so great that every songwriter on Music Row should be absolutely embarrassed to put their cliche-ridden garbage next to it. Radio fodder. And for Glenn Campbell to do this, with half his brain tied behind his back, literally, is just an absolute amazing statement about not only today's musical equivalent of junk food, of which I like junk food, and also an absolutely astounding farewell to an absolute master entertainer. Glenn Campbell, I, and every lover of country music, salute you as you ride off into your sunset ladies and gentlemen have a listen to this song i guarantee you'll be going what the 
the F have I been listening to on the radio? The master, Glenn Campbell, has left the building, ladies and gentlemen. Also at the boot, Gail Thompson writes about Lauren Elena having vocal surgery in August. Now, Lauren chose to do this while she had some off time to avoid having to cancel dates or let anyone down for anything. There's a lot of country artists I could name that should probably take a clue from uh, Lauren Elena. So uh, I could name, uh, you know, some, but I've named them in the past and you know, I, I'm i not up for torches and pitchforks this week. Anyway, after the surgery, Lauren Elena had to stay completely silent for eight days. And then for the following eight days, she was only allowed to speak for five minutes per day. Now, I know what all the fellows out there are thinking. Where can I sign my wife up for vocal cord surgery? I don't think I'm going to go any further into that one. Well, Gail Thompson also brings us another story reporting that the Bacon Brothers, you know that uh, the band featuring Kevin Bacon and his brother, whatever the hell his name is, they have released their new album entitled 36 Cents. I went on to Spotify to have a little listen for myself to this 36 cents album or at least a good handful of tunes off of it and i must say this is uh some of the best damn tasty country americana music i've heard in quite a while their sound is great i really enjoyed their melodies and the nearly endless surprises in their arrangements. You know, usually you're here listening to someone, listening to a song, and and you kind of already know sort of what the next chord's going to be. Well, not so here. These guys are full of surprises, and it's not like they're doing dissonant stuff that sounds like someone banging on a garbage can lid out of tune. No, I mean, this stuff is tasty. It's good. Uh, creative subject matters. Uh, you know, all around, they, they're they getting the job done, and they're doing it really great. Great stuff. I highly recommend checking out the Bacon Brothers and their new album, 36 Cents. All right. Here's another story over at theboot.com. This one written by Christina Vinson. Bluegrass legend Ralph Stanley has been inducted as a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, which was founded in 1780, the year Ralph Stanley was born. That was a joke, people. That would make him like 175 years old or something like that. Anyway, the Academy recognizes America's greatest thinkers and doers, Ralph Stanley, who is 87 years old, is currently on his farewell tour, but reportedly has no plans to retire as long as he is physically able to continue performing. And according to all reports, he still feels great and is going strong. Now back to Gail Thompson over at the boot. I told you these ladies tore it up. And this will be my last one over at the boot, and I'll move along. They are reporting, or Gail is reporting, that a motorcycle that has been sitting in Waylon Jennings' living room since 1979 that was once owned by Buddy Holly... He's a, a, that motorcycle's been auctioned off, and it was auctioned off for four hundred and fifty-seven thousand dollars 
to an anonymous buyer who plans to write it once and then put it on long-term loan to Buddy Holly to the Buddy Holly Museum. Now, in that same auction, Willie Nelson's braids were also sold for thirty-seven thousand dollars. No word on where those are headed. NashvilleGab.com. Time to check in over there. According to NashvilleGab.com, Toby Keith has just announced the title for his next album, his forthcoming album. It will be called 35 MPH Town, like miles per hour town. His first single from that album will probably be out by the time you hear this. Because it's due uh, out October 14th. And the album is called Drunk Americans. Interesting title. Over at the 615, which is a division of Billboard.com, there is a story that is not credited to a writer, just Associated Press slash Billboard staff which I think could be a story in itself. Like, why why do they not credit their writers over there at Billboard? Well, maybe they don't want their writers to be known because then people would uh, try and go and uh, bribe them to go up a notch or two on the charts. But the story that we're going to get into here is that a rock exhibit is coming to the Country Music Hall of Fame. That that would mean a rock music exhibit, not an actual rock ob- exhibit. Like, over here we have stalagmites, and hanging from the roof, stalactites. No, not, not the, none of that spelunking cave BS. No, this is about rock music, you know, uh, which came from the period of the late 60s and early 70s from the Nashville area in which uh, rock and folk artists did come to Nashville and create some of their most enduring recordings in this area, such as Bob Dylan's Blonde on Blonde, The Bird's Sweetheart of the Rodeo, and Neil Young's Harvest Album. Very cool. Over at Rolling Stone Country. Hey, it's a newcomer to the undercountry music news roll. So why don't we uh, give a big rolling round of thunder to Rolling Stone Country. Yeah, I heard about Rolling Stone Country at a Nashville industry lunch, uh, music industry lunch I attended a few months back. But this is the first time I've seen it surface on the front page of Google. When searching for country music news. So uh, welcome to hell, guys. Honeymoon's over. You know, Rolling Stone Country, they have pretty much all the same stories I've already brought to you. Uh, But in the Waylon Jennings auction story, they give top billing, actually, to Willie Nelson's braids instead of the Buddy Holly motorcycle, which I found interesting. Except that they didn't reveal the buyer... Or where the braids are now headed. Okay, so how did nobody else have this next story? Now here's one that Rolling Stone Country pretty much uh, cornered the market on. And I got to give them props for that. The George Jones Museum will be coming soon to the lower Broadway area of Nashville. No word yet on the actual completion date, much less opening date. This is just an announcement that there is a forthcoming George Jones Museum coming to Nashville. All right. I feel hotter than a $2 pistol. Over at Country Standard Time, they are reporting... That the Lone Bellow has a new single out called Then Came the Morning. I had to listen to this song, and I like it. 
It was decent, funky beat, hippy dippy kind of country, but cool. I endorse it. And I don't endorse much of anything these days. And finally, here's a story that nobody else has reported on. So, found another one, and I figured I'd bring it to you. I found it like on Facebook. And I forget where it was reposted from, but it's not on any of the top country music news outlets. So I'm going to bring it to you. For weeks, the saga over the destiny of RCA Studio A on on Music Row in Nashville. Uh, well, it's been scheduled for demolition, and uh, that has been swirling in the news for like over a month now. Now, the developer who purchased that building had stated that they will demolish the building housing RCA Studio A unless a buyer who wishes to preserve the building would be able to come forward with a serious offer by the end of September. Okay, that story went around all over the place. Here's the story that nobody is reporting about this story. And that is that just last week, an anonymous buyer who plans to preserve Studio A actually has stepped forward. Not only stepped forward, but they purchased the building. So RCA Studio A has been saved. And since that news doesn't carry any victims or inflame false panic. I guess nobody in any of the top news, country music news outlets felt like they needed to be reporting it. But I'll report it and I will bring it to you. And that's why you come right here onto the Under Country Music News each and every week. Because this has been your... Thank you for listening to the Undercountry Music News. The Undercountry Music News is just a small excerpt of the weekly, hour long internet broadcast, Undercountry Music, where I play music and have great interviews by lesser known original country acts. Get on over to undercountrymusic.com where you can listen and subscribe. Stay under, stay country.